Okay, so we got some alarming details with the U.S. southern border that I will give you here in this video, as well as Germany lets Ukraine use German weapons against targets in Russia. Germany is part of NATO after the U.S. also eases its stance. This means that now Ukraine will be allowed to attack inside of Russia at Russian military bases. This is because Russia and Vladimir Putin have been strategically attacking Ukraine from right outside the border with missile launches repeatedly over and over and over again, knowing that NATO. United States, Germany, and all these NATO countries have told Ukraine, do not attack Russia on Russian soil, because Vladimir Putin has said this all along, don't attack Russia, this is a red line. So Vladimir Putin has basically used this as a strategy and put all these military bases and these missile launch points right outside on the Russian border knowing that Ukraine won't attack them there. And this has become a, become a massive problem for Ukraine because it's like, ah, ha, ha, you can't attack us there. And they're just launching missile barrages over and over and over again, basically just pounding all these Ukrainian people, literally hitting apartment buildings as well, civilians. And does Vladimir Putin care? Obviously not. You can see here, both Germany and the U.S. specifically authorized the use of weapons to defend a major city in Ukraine, Kharkiv, whose capital city of the same name lies only 20 kilometers, 12 miles from Russia. Russian ballistic missiles slammed into an apartment building in the city overnight. Again, they're just launching missiles with no you know, disregard for anybody. Ukrainian officials said that it slammed into an apartment building. Obviously, this is not the first time this has happened, killing at least six people, civilians. The German government said Ukraine can use its weapons, its supplies against positions just over the border from where Russia launches its attacks on Kharkiv. A day earlier, U.S. President Joe Biden gave Kyiv a green light to strike back with American weapons at Russian military assets only targeting the region, according to U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. In response, Russian Dmitry Medvedev, the deputy head of Russia's Security Council and also former president, possibly number two in line to Putin, said Friday that Ukraine and its NATO allies will receive such a devastating response that the alliance won't be able to avoid entering the conflict, aka entering the war, an eventuality that Western governments have ruled out, which is like, do they want the United States and NATO, the 30 plus other countries to enter the war? Russia is kind of like almost mind-boggling to me. But on the other hand, what do they expect Ukraine to do? Just keep getting pounded by missiles just because these military bases, these missile launch sites are right outside the border? And do they not want them to destroy these missile launch sites just because Putin says, oh, no, no. Don't attack these missile launch sites. We know that you know these missiles are there, but uh, we're just going to keep launching these missile sites, uh, but you can't attack them. Again, let me know your thoughts here in the comments. And this isn't the only border with massive problems going on here. Shocking new border statistics reveal surprising country that migrants are flocking to the United States from. The San Diego border sees migrants from over 170 countries. A high number of Chinese migrants are arriving into Southern California, 
About 62% of all Chinese migrants are arriving at America's borders, are entering through San Diego, according to the U.S. Border Patrol statistics. Kind of makes you wonder why they're picking that particular spot. At least 48,500 Chinese migrants have crossed into the U.S. illegally, mostly surrendering to Border Patrol with the hopes of seeking asylum just since October 1st through April. And you can take a look at the border numbers here of the countries, the top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven countries. China easily outweighing all the other countries by a long shot. It's an 8,600% increase since 2021 when there was only 342 Chinese nationals that came into the country. Now there's almost 50,000. Take a listen. Welcome back. Shocking new numbers from the border. Border Patrol Chief Jason Owen writing this on X. Over 52,000 special interest aliens were apprehended by Border Patrol just since October 1st. Almost 90 percent of those encounters happening in the San Diego sector. Joining me now is Missouri Congressman and member of the House Oversight Committee, Eric Burleson. Congressman, thanks very much for being here this morning. I know you posted uh, this uh, on X, uh, quote, Joe Biden and Secretary Mayorkas let a wanted murderer into our country. That wanted murderer went on to stab his girlfriend and her four-year-old daughter to death in the United States. Biden's border crisis is endangering Americans every day. And now we've got, Congressman, these numbers of uh, all of these special interest aliens being apprehended. Tell us what a special interest alien is, Congressman. Yeah, these are individuals that are that have got criminal activity. They've got criminal records from other other um, nations that they're coming from. They could also be someone who's on a terror watch list. But at the end of the day, what's what's really startling is the overall number. But you know, over two million known gotaways, people that we have no idea who they were, but we know that they came across the border and they they clearly didn't want to go through our customs and border patrol because they probably knew that they would they had a criminal record or they had some background. So the, I would say that that 50,000 number is just the tip of the iceberg. I mean, do you have any idea why this administration uh, has this wide open border, why they have allowed America to be in such a vulnerable position with all of these encounters of potential terrorists and all these unknowns about who many of these people are? We don't know what their motivations are. I, you know, it really puzzles me, Maria, because I, I can't understand why they would want to undermine their base. You know, for a long time, labor unions were supportive of the Democratic Party. Uh, they were they were a core pillar for for Democratic uh, for the for that party. And all of this illegal immigration is completely undermining blue collar workers, our our labor forces in in the United States. And I would think that the labor unions, and I think the polls indicate. Labor unions are waking up and seeing that the party and this president is is not interested in, in benefiting them. Well, part of the issue, uh, according to some of your colleagues, is that they think they want these people to ultimately become voters. Do you find that illegals are going to be voting in, in American elections? Yeah, there's even been some Democrats that have said the quiet part out loud, that, that uh, they want to see... More, uh, they don't want to stop the flow of illegal immigrants because they're able to count those people in their census and they don't want to lose their congressional district. Right. So I think that that's step one. Step two would be what you're seeing blatantly happen in cities like Washington, D.C., where they are allowing them uh, where they're, they're allowing illegal immigrants to vote, to actually vote, which is crazy. And that is kind of crazy, especially when we have voting without identification, which is, you can let me know your thoughts on that. And, um, you know, obviously that is a point of contention, which is uh, honestly beside me. I, I, you know, I don't even know how that's possible, but in today's day and age, that's just wild to me. Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. I'll keep you up to date with everything happening here in our country and around the world that you need to know about here on a daily basis.
So if you haven't yet, subscribe down below. Click the bell icon so you don't miss out on new videos that happen here at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Click here to see my video on the next $1 trillion being pumped into the American economy. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.